Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tina and it's a beautiful day to be creating with you. It really is. It's it's sunny and it's and it's and then it's not. And then it's sunny and then it's not and it's hot. So I'm inside. So it's beautiful, right? Okay. I am working my way through several layouts with this collection from Photoplay. Um there's actually already a video that's called Anchors Away. Um, and there's actually already a video here on the YouTube channel for a layout that I did. These are pictures from the first cruise that George and I went on a couple of years ago. And our pictures are not great. It is a struggle. Um, but we were running away from home. And we weren't really thinking about spending a lot of time um, with the camera. So I'm trying to kind of work my way through and I'm doing a lot simpler designs with this. It's kind of freeing. Okay, we're gonna just go ahead and dive in. I have got it both of the anchor pages um, so that I could reserve the inside to use to get a little more layouts, of course. Um, I've brought this in from the solids that was available with this collection. The photo play paper is very nice. It is nice and thick. I'm trying to grab the, it's the Anchors Away coordinating cardstock. Here we go one here um and i'm even pulling in uh some stuff from my stash but uh that's at 11 by 11 i have a piece of white that i'm trying to use up didn't love it um it's 11 by 11 it works great for backgrounds my cricket doesn't like it and you know i have standards haha -ha. okay so i'm gonna as i mentioned keep this super simple i have this little banner that i'm going to incorporate and i want to map uh some photos so let's go ahead and get started i've done some stuff ahead of time um and then some stuff i'm gonna do um right here one of the things is matting my photos i use a selfie so my photos are often um you know i have to crop them they're not true four by sixes you kind of get used to it um after a while but this is how i mat my photos someone had asked me how i know how to pre-cut my mats so i love when i get asked questions because i'm like you're you're my people i do this and i say okay it looks good from the top and the side and then i move it over to my cutter and then i line it up like this and i say okay it's going to be good enough and this is kind i don't so i don't pre-cut mats for my photos unless it is on um a pre-done layout that I'm doing. All right, I grabbed this color here from my stash. I love how we can just kind of grab so many things. And I thought this was a great thing for this blue. And this is, um, I think American Crafts Blue Jay. All right. And I'm gonna be using this uh, for more than, than one. I'm gonna map my big picture on it too, but here you go. Like craft beast mode here. Just throw it on there. All right. It's tough sometimes trying to stay on camera. Okay. So I I don't, I'm really trying to, I don't want to put perfection standards on myself with my crafting. I feel like, I feel like scrapbooking had at a point uh, recently become more complicated for me. And um, I'm, so I'm trying to simplify my process. I'm trying to enjoy um it, it not just what i'm doing like in the creating of it but i'm i also want to enjoy knowing that it's done if that makes it like i have a sense of accomplishment when i actually you know get them done um i did not love these photos i'm just doing that same technique for all four of these using these different colors um all right, so we went on this cruise, and this is kind of how it went. Um, my husband, George, and I used to spend a lot of time talking about all the things we were going to one day do. And I had gotten really tired. Um, now we know I, I have some... Uh, I have some vitamin deficiencies and stuff like that, but I was also just kind of running. I was doing too much or trying to do too much, and I was overextending myself and putting unrealistic expectations on myself, and that's a lot, and I think a lot of us do that. Like, now that I'm sharing this with people, I'm, I'm hearing so many people say, yeah, I do that too. Now, this is the sunburst paper that was in the kit, and I gutted those as well so I could um, have those for another layout. I really liked the burst that went all the way around it. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, we started talking about a cruise after a friend posted and, um, as soon as we started talking about it, I just said, Hey, look, if we are going to actually book this, then I want to go ahead and, and talk about it. But if this is another conversation about like someday, one day, maybe I don't have the energy. And he said, okay, we'll book it. And it was the perfect time for us to run away. It was a short cruise. Um, it was like just down the coast. It went to multiple ports and um, it just worked like for the timing. And it launched us into an amazing, wonderful, crazy time of cruising that we are just loving. So yay, run away from home, right? <laughs> okay, so for this one over here, I have this color here. And um, for my photos, I'm going to be overlapping, putting this one on foam tape. I'll add a little foam tape here. This is going to go on some foam tape. I'm going to hang this probably. And so I had some general ideas. This one here, though, I need to bring in this color right here so I have some on this page. And I forgot to mat my little uh, pocket card. I love these pocket cards are included. So I do before I start cutting in my paper, I, I grab the sheets that have those and I set those aside. Um, I'm really loving those. Um, it was something that um, I had access to in the past, but it was an extra cost. And you know, I'm always looking to manage my product and my craft dollars as best as I can. Okay, got those pops of color. There we go. All right. See, simple, but I like it. It really does. It it really does add a lot. And um, matting those. Okay, I'm gonna move this off because I have a little project that I want to do with this. This is that 11 by 11 white. And uh, what I have here is a three eighths um, piece of white paper. This is my template. I want to create my journaling in between these and bring this blue over here. So when I cut this down to the 11 by 11, um, I then did quarter of an inch strips so that I would be able to do this on the other page. All right, I'm going to grab my liquid glue and see if it's going to be kind to me. It, it, it loves to hate me. <laughs> okay. But I really love the precision tip. I'm like, if it if it's glue without a precision tip now, I'm like, mm -mm, not for me. All right, let's see. And uh, some of these are bigger than uh, the 11, and I'll have to trim those off. I have been using this glue here for a while, and it does like, there's obviously, I leave it open, so it gets clogged frequently. And then I put a pin in there. So I kind of push whatever's there down in there, creating, creating my own havoc. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. I'm going to do about a quarter of an inch up and then I'm going to go ahead and put the, um, the piece down. And this glue does not take long to dry. And then I will have my spacer here. And this is why I haven't put this down also is because I know how many lines I want and I could trim this up a little bit and the layout really won't um, sacrifice in any way. There we go again. Another strip. And I think this just adds a little something. It gives us some dimension for the journaling. I actually like the longer pieces because I can kind of just put those down wherever. Whereas these I have to get right to the edge. There we go. Okay, we'll move our spacer up. Make sure it's nice and flat. Okay. And then I will do my journaling on the computer. I will go through a little phase where I'll do some journaling uh, with my own handwriting because um, I don't have any handwriting samples from like my great grandmother or my great grandfather. Like we just don't have those things. So I do understand, um, the value in having, um, handwriting samples. Uh, but I feel like I have enough of that at this point. Hit that right at the end there. There we go. And now our final one. And this will give me plenty. So my idea why I needed some journaling room is, um, I thought this would be a great place to kind of put um, the story of how we kind of ran away and we really enjoyed, you know, finding some time to relax. And I read a book that um, that I have really enjoyed 
uh, and I've been taking it on every cruise. It's one of those books that you just read again and again. And um, each time I read it, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but every time I read it, I can tend to focus on uh, something different that's that's in the book. And it's kind of really about um, self-awareness. All right, so I do think now that I see where they're gonna lay out that I'm going to trim a little off. I don't wanna lose this blue color down here because that's the color I match. So I'm gonna cut off of the top and I'm gonna say I'm gonna cut about a half of an inch. Okay. It's a little, little short. All right, let me give you a measurement on this piece here now that it's all cut. Okay, so this is uh, 10 by, um, so it's backwards, it's gonna be seven and a half. Let's put it down here so I double check for you. Seven and a half. All right, and my photo that's going on it is a little bit bigger. That's a five by seven photo. Okay, look at the other side. I love these papers. I really like this one too. I'll trim these off before we put this together. This is all this is all my fancy stuff right here. <laughs> this is as fancy as I'm gonna be. Oh, that one shot like all the way up into my ribbon containers. Okay, look how nice that looks. See that? And I'll just be able to do my journaling and uh, pop it right in there. You could even hand write in there, though, as well. All right. You can tell that my first um, my first one here is crooked. I don't know if I can pull it up. It's driving me nuts. Okay, nope, staying down. All right, I'm basically just going to center this. Look, all was lost as soon as I had the squirrel moment. I'm gonna kind of just eyeball it and say it looks like it's kind of equal all the way around. Look, you can really see how off that is. I must not have had my spacer very tight. All right, we're gonna do a little lift and we're gonna have to be really careful. This this paper here uh, split. This is not my favorite paper. So we're just gonna, looks like it kind of went wonky before that, but at least this way it's, you know, not super at the top. I don't know. I think, I think it's just meant to be crooked. This paper that is underneath of this is not friendly. I'm going to, I'm going to let it go. And it happens to all of us. This is why back in the day I used to um, tilt all my pictures. <laughs> Did you guys do that? I would tilt. Um, I would tilt so many pictures back in the day. That was like the thing. That was the fancy. All right. I just um the anchors to me. Uh, we need to pay attention to those because they're cut specific. We'll go ahead and drop this on. Um, and I'm just centering that as well. There we go. I like to put a little washi tape on the back here. Uh, this is one of the few things I use washi tape for. I recently said I'm going to need to start trying some more washi tape. Um, there's so much washi tape out there. I've been using up the same washi tape for years um, as a tool. My daughter used to buy me these giant tubes of washi tape uh, every Christmas. And um, they would, they would, would some of them would just be crazy. Okay, there we go. Okay, so it is a little crooked. I don't know if I had used less adhesive, I might be able to move it easier. Let's just see. I'm just gonna shove this bone folder back there and see if I think it's gonna rip my paper though. I would have to get a lot off to, I'm just kind of lifting it a little bit while I kind of put it under there to separate it. It doesn't really matter to me if the white paper rips, but I don't wanna thin out what's on top. I feel like I would have to move an awful lot here. Put this in on the side, okay. Basically, I have to take almost the entire thing off for this tilt. That that corner is. I added a little extra adhesive to that corner because I noticed it had some lift. Okay. All right, that's going to be better, and I'm going to put less adhesive. There we go. With those lines, I really, I mean, probably would have been better if I measured it out, but I'm really trying to take care of all that. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and bring this over here and we'll bring this in. 
There we go. Crisis diverted. All right. I'm going to uh, put the uh, bottom piece down first. I'm just going to slide this way. And we're going to hopefully put this together pretty quickly. This is really nice cardstock. I, I, I really do like this cardstock. I'm enjoying working with all different kinds of cardstock right now. I'm just trying them all out. I'm learning so much. All right. All the way around. And I'm loving textured cardstock. I like the mix. I was never a fan of textured cardstock because as a stamper, I just knew that it wasn't great. But what I'm realizing is having the mix and not going either or um, is the best of both worlds. This one is really nice because um, you can, if you flip it over, you can barely see that it's a textured cardstock. And that's kind of nice because, you know, that's like the best of both worlds. Oh, this is a pretty washi tape. As I'm thinking about buying more rolls, I'll have you know I probably have about 60 in that drawer. Okay, here we go. My anchors look good this way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my two, my top and my bottom photo in. Okay, because everything's going to go on top of these. And I'm doing about the same uh, border uh, width as is around my photo. This is to bring the, I will always call this lagoon, the lagoonish color in. I don't think I'll ever know it is anything else. It was my favorite color for a very, very long time. Okay, there we go. And this one here is going to go on foam tape. I am going to be generous with my foam tape. I am always generous with my foam tape. But what I don't like is um, when I put my books together and I haven't used enough foam tape, so it kind of caves on one side. Um, I really don't like that. There we go. All right, I'm going to leave that because I have a little bit more that I want to do. Foam tape for this as well. Getting all that foam tape out of the way. It's going to fit. Let's see. There we go. Foam tape on this. This is what I normally do to cut down on video time. I try to have my items foam taped. And now you guys will see why, because it, it's a little time consuming. But so worth it. I really love, I like the dimension. I like the, the different layering. So for me, I'm, I'm always going to be pro on my foam tape. Okay, these ones here I tend to do a little less with. We'll grab some pre-cut, grab some pre-cut foam. I'm a shaker girl, so I have all all kinds of shaker foams. This would have been nice. I have some shaker bits that would match this. We could have added a little shaker to this. But that's okay. We're keeping it simple. Okay. And here what I did was, um, this is one of the um, anchors away. This is the card ephemera cardstock sorry ephemera and um this is like it's got all kinds of frames and tags and different things and um i wanted to work with it because i thought it was great i took a stitch circle i have um, a huge set of nesting circles and i grabbed that and this is the same color here just kind of saying if i have something over here then i need something over here all right except for my yellow that way i have a standout and a standout all right I've had this in my drawer for I don't even know how long. Just a bag with some twine. I don't know. It could have been from a shirt for all I know. I have absolutely no idea. But I'm trying to use up something uh, with each thing that I do. So this, this is kind of perfect. I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece for right here. And it's hanging over. And then for the rest of this... I'm thinking I might 
wrap this around my photo twice at the bottom here. Yeah, I think I will. All right, we're just gonna double it up. That will make it easy on us. All right, and I'm gonna put it right here. It's better if you're gonna do this, obviously, if you do it before you put your foam tape on because then you're not as limited and you don't have to cut around, but I'm not being so picky. Look at this fun paper that's on this side too. This paper pack was really great. And I love that it's cruise specific. If you're a cruiser, I would love to hear that you're a cruiser. Um, I have a lot of cruises that I'll be doing and lots of ship life, but um, also um, all the places we went. We've been to uh, multiple countries in Europe. We just did Spain. Um, we did a couple of ports here in America as well. Okay. Oh, I think that's great. All right. And I have a little bit of this twine here and I'm just going to cut some of that. And I think I'm going to do this one. Some twine from my stash. It kind of has a lagoon color to it. So I think I'll do that one. And I'm using this tag that says on cruise control from the ephemera. And I am four. I folded it over four deep or, or four thick, four, four strands thick. Okay, got to make sure I get through both of them which isn't easy when you have fat fingers. Okay, there we go. Yep, that's good. All right, and then I'm gonna fray this by just kind of taking my piercing tool and um, just kind of going up through the, um, the twine. It might take a few shots to kind of spread your twine doing this. I normally kind of say, okay, I'm going to do it, and I can get annoyed if I can't get it. There we go. But if you, if you stay at it, you can get it. Or you can, like, do the, the, un, the unravel kind of thing, where you twist it the opposite way. That works, too. I was doing lots of cutting this morning, and a lot of half to laundry and other things. So this is Nice. I already feel so much more relaxed and happy. Okay, so I think my cruise control is going to kind of go right over here. So I'm going to put foam tape on the bottom portion of my tag so that it can sit on top of the picture and then still be elevated. Um, and then that way it doesn't get kind of wonky. And there we go. Okay. I think I'm ready to put this together for the... Um, for the twine that I have here that's going to become my banner, I'm going to kind of take a look at where I would like these. And then I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to grab a glue dot. And I'm going to put it down. I know it's risky, but I feel like these are big enough that I'll hit that glue dot since I have those on foam tape and I'll just say this is where I kind of need them to be and stick within those parameters. There we go. All right, I feel like that's pretty good. All right, that'll help me hold those. I do want to get my picture down though, so in case it goes on the top at this point. Kind of excited i got to i got to get rid of a little bag i can say i used an entire bag of stuff from my stash even though it was only white twine that is something that i'm really working on is just using uh something from my stash every single project i need to use something from my stash um. This one's supposed to be on the end. I didn't want the anchors on the edge and I didn't want the yellow on the edge because I have the anchors and the yellow was right there. So 
there we go. I'm really liking how this is turning out. It's simple and it's classic, but it's also super cute. All right, I'm gonna put this picture down as it all comes together. And I'm, uh, I am putting this uh, up higher, not um, in the center. Um, I mean, oh, I kind of like it in the center now that I moved it. I lied. There we go. In the center it goes. This can come down over those lines. And it's going to hang out right there. I have this uh, from the ephemera package. Well, it's just a little ship. And then off to the side, I had this little ship. And in case it fit, I thought it would be cool to stamp it right there. I'm going to grab a really dark blue uh, from my stash here. I have sapphire. Um, it's just a really dark blue. And no gouge underneath. So we're going to say, and it's a new stamp. I'm just going to wait and let that absorb um, since I don't have a, um, a stamping surface underneath, like a stamp pad. Oh, that turned out really cute. Okay, great. I'm thinking this tag is a little too small, and I thought that it might be. So in that same packet is this Life is Better on a Cruise. And I think we will extend the tag by cutting off the Life is Better. We'll reserve this for another time, cut it nice and short maybe, or have it sticking out of a picture, or maybe we won't. I need to change my blade. Okay, and I'm thinking. We might even go this way with this. I kind of like that. There we go, we ha we'll have a little collage of items right down here and this has this is a little shiny I thought that was cool okay I'm gonna put this uh so that there's a small space there there we go we'll peel this off I just don't want to see the twine through the hole there there we go no foam tape on this little guy. I'll just kind of tuck this right there. I'm going to bring in some bling here in just a minute. I want to slide that um, underneath. Let's see where... I'm not worried about the, the font too much, but I do kind of want to... There we go. See if I can, hmm, I'm gonna cut away some of that foam tape. I do this sometimes since I wanna tuck. I love to tuck um, when my layout's almost done. So I've gotten really good at figuring out, it's probably the foam tape under this one. I've gotten really good at kind of figuring out what I have to do to not take apart my entire layout. And these uh, just really fine scissors, they're, they're, they're my friend when that happens. I can feel it catching on the foam tape. But I love my foam tape and I'm not gonna stop. I never stop using the foam tape. And I don't remove it. I just kind of cut it away and then I just leave it under there. This has adhesive on it. I better be careful. There we go. That's kind of what I was going for right there. Worth it. Okay. And now I have this one here with all the foam tape again. This has really turned out, you know, for not liking my pictures, I have created a great area here for journaling. I'll be able to tell a lot about the cruise. And one of the things that I want to share, uh, the reason why I chose this on cruise time, um, I'm just looking for placement. Uh, I don't want it to cover up too, too much of this picture with this purpley sunset. Um, is that when you go on a cruise and you've never been on one, everything is new, right? But there is cruise time and there is such a thing as cruise time. But one of the, thing that, the things that the captain, one of many, um, that the captain does, he always tells you when sunset is going to be. 
So every night, if you want to watch the sunset, whether, you know, it's from your balcony or you want to go up and watch it or, you know, go to the, one of the observation areas, um, it's, it's just, it's a really nice thing. It's, it's a nice way to take time out and, and really enjoy it. And that I think is one of the biggest things that George and I learned while we were on a cruise is just to slow down just to, to slow down and, and start taking time to really enjoy the things that we want to do and to do them now and stop putting them off. And it's been a wonderful life lesson for us. Okay, so I grabbed these. I liked the colors. Um, these are from Echo Park and they're from the Dream Big collection. And I liked that one, that one, that one, and that one when I looked at the colors and I thought, well, this I'll just move into my autumn stuff. So this was a, a, a nice, perfect, perfect set for me. All right, I'm gonna put a big one right there and I'm placing some big ones right now. I'm not gonna use the green on this one. I'm gonna do the blue there and I'm gonna have a set down here. So I'll do the white and I think I'd like to just do two over here though. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill in what I have. So up here, I'm going to now switch to a white. There we go. And then a blue is going to come down here. And I really like to kind of just put mine, however, however ways. And then over here, I'm going to grab a medium. There we go. I'm going to put a blue one up above here. And then I have a blue one uh, up here. I'm gonna grab this yellow. And then I'm gonna grab a white one and I'm gonna put it right there too. And I would usually put one right there. It's like a perfect spot, but I'm not going to. I feel like I would like a little bit here though, as I'm looking. There's a white one. And I think I'll do a yellow. There we go. So stay with odd numbers there. Okay. And then I have a two and two. That's going to do it for me. All right. Except for my journaling. Thank you so much for spending this crafty time with me. Um, I really am enjoying trying to embrace... Um, embrace my my scrapbooking to to realize that um there was a reason why I did this not just to share my story and revisit my memories but to just really connect with my life and and to to cherish all of it and it really does for me balance me and it makes me happy. I definitely feel that crafting gives us a mental, physical, and emotional outlet. And it, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have. And we can do it at any time in our own home. So how how amazing is that? Um, if you guys found this video helpful, if you liked spending this time with me, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. It helps me out here in the YouTube community. And I would love to hear from you. And if you leave me a comment, I'll make sure to get back with you. I'll leave any additional information you need uh, down in the um, comments of the uh, post and you can uh, check out the details on these products. Have a great day. Bye-bye.